Hey everybody, it's Mr. Klein. Happy Tuesday. I wanted to show you a couple of assignments that I've added to our content page and then follow up on a couple of things I'm hearing from email and stuff from some students. So go ahead and go into our content page here and if you scroll down, hopefully everybody got a chance to do this bias in the Warner Crime questions. Again, some of you have not gotten your book yet. It's on its way. That's fine. Don't worry about it. As long as it's in by the end of this week, that's fine. But I, I, um, I really don't want you to get behind. So just try as much as you can to keep up with the rest of the work. Luckily, the book is pretty easy to read. It's a quick read and it's really good and fun. So you might not want to even put it down. So that'll be an easy part for you. And these questions are just based on comprehension. You just got to read to know the answers. But let me show you what I've added here. We've got bias part two. So this is a continuation of where we left off from the first bias prezi. And the first thing you'll do is just click on that and this will take you to this video. Now it says summer 2020, I apologize for that. And I'm not like the greatest person at tech in the world. So uh, I'm not quite sure how to change the title, but that's okay. It's, it's all good information. And then you're gonna click on this link and this will take you to a really fascinating interview by this woman, about this woman named Jennifer Eberhardt, there she is. She is a neurologist, or sorry, social psychologist at Stanford, it says right here. And she studies the part of bias that's kind of hardwired into our brain and it's really fascinating. So it's not really about the environment, it's about how our brains are set up. So looking at bias, not by people's behavior, but looking at bias through uh, neural imaging. And she's found some fascinating stuff. So I think that you'll be really interested in how bias is kind of built into our brains. So, um, and she literally wrote the book on bias. It's called Biased. So you'll listen to that interview. You just uh, click here and then you'll listen to it. Now, one of the most important things about these two things um, that I have here, this Jennifer Eberhardt and then this Yasmin Abdel Magyed, you might remember her from our PowerPoint that we did about bias. Some of you thought that she was a fashion designer and she ended up being a chemical engineer. I think she was number, I want to say five on the list, but you'll see her. And she gives this really cool TED talk all about bias and all about being a Muslim woman who is hijabed and the things that people assume about her when they don't even know her. So again, kind of touching into those implicit biases that we have just based on people's appearances. So I think you'll really enjoy it. It's really interesting. It's called, What Does My Headscarf Mean to You? Okay, and so those two new resources I've added, you're gonna listen to them and expect, first of all, expect them to be on your midterm and your final. So I might ask you some things about bias and uh, uh, Jennifer Eberhardt's work. And again, when we get to the midterm and final, I'm gonna be giving you study guides and we're gonna review, so. But nevertheless, expect for this stuff to be not only on your exams, but also, probably more importantly, is this: these are going to be available to you to use as resources on an essay. And we're going to start talking about essay number one at the end of this week. So ideally, I'll have a prompt up for you and we'll start working our way through it. Okay? So let's go back here. So we've got the bias prezi. And then we've got this interview with Jennifer Eberhardt. And again, when you watch these, particularly these two and the Brezzi too, I guess as well, you wanna be taking notes. And I touched upon this in our live Zoom meeting. Uh, it's much easier to remember stuff. If you just have a piece of paper and a pen out, and when they mention an important term like implicit, explicit bias, what is it? What are some of the examples they give? Um, it can really help you because then you can review those notes when those tests come around. And when you go to write an essay, you can watch these again and you can incorporate those quotes and those ideas into your essay. And we're gonna talk about that in greater detail, but we start with this. So there's the bias part two. And then below that, we have essay fundamentals. So, and again, sorry about this. This is summer 2020, but don't worry about it. It's all good. I just didn't, I couldn't change the title, but I'm sorry. So you'll click into this and just examples of what an intro should do, some, guidelines and then I give you some examples of intro paragraphs here and I kind of list them out okay cool so let me go back to our page oh there we go and then again you'll just click through these there's gonna be a presentation that you go through right here about intro paragraphs just go click present and it will take you into that Google Slides and then this is super important, okay? Students struggle with this more than anything else in my class, even though it's not that hard. It's really not. 
incorporating outside sources, you mean using MLA uh, citation, okay? MLA is Modern Language Association, but you don't really need to know that. All you need to know is that when you take quotes or examples from outside sources, it could be anything, it could be a movie, it could be a song, it could be a book, it could be an article, it could be a TED talk. Anytime you're using quotes and examples from outside sources, you have to incorporate them in a way that uses MLA style. You have to give the proper credit and you have to have a works cited page, okay? And then down here, so you'll click on this and it'll open up the PDF here for you, okay? And this really gets into detail, so please pay attention when you're going through this. Don't just scan through it, because you're gonna use this, and you're gonna need to know it. And if I get essay one back, and there's no MLA citation, there's no quotes and paraphrase, there's nothing like that, we're gonna have problems, and that's gonna really affect your grade. Now, I'm not gonna expect you to just read this and automatically know it on your own. I'm gonna do uh, lectures and videos about this too, kind of reinforcing some of these points, okay? So I'm not just gonna, I'm not just throwing you out in the pool and saying, good luck, hope you can swim. I'm gonna guide you along with this too, but it's up to you to do some of this work as well. So read through this as thoroughly and carefully as you can, because I think the information is pretty good and it's pretty detailed, okay? It tells you about the differences between quoting and paraphrasing, when do you do quotes versus paraphrasing, one versus the other, when do you know which to do what, what is who, what, and where. This is all the information you have to include when you use an outside source, and then what is a parenthetical documentation, or what is parenthetical documentation? Right here, that's parenthetical documentation, okay? So read through that, and it'll give you the fundamentals of MLA citation, all right? And then we will discuss that later, and I might have a quiz on that too, because that's usually what I have to do to get students to really pay attention to something to say, hey, there's gonna be a quiz on this. So don't be surprised if there is a quiz coming up on the basics of MLA citation, but again, that will be after I've done a video and kind of reinforced the really important points, okay? Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna go back into the content page and I think that's all I've got now. All I'm posting is this bias part two module and this essay fundamentals, okay? Some of, for some of you, the essay fundamentals module might be a little bit of review, but that's okay. Anytime we get into a new English class with a different teacher, different professor, I find it helpful to know exactly what that professor focuses on. Different professors might want different things or they might want to focus on different things. And one of the things I like to focus on is proper citation and incorporating quotes and paraphrases from outside sources in the correct way. Because many times this makes the difference between a bad essay and a good essay. It's the quality of resources that you incorporate to, to strengthen your argument and also doing it the proper way according to MLA citation. And best of all, with things like EasyBib and Citation Generator, those apps online, it, it literally takes no brain power. You just cut and paste and it's super easy. So I'll be showing you that as well in a, in a live Zoom. Okay, and for those of you still asking, some of you have not read in the announcement section, um, super important part of this class, everybody. So if you've just recently added, go right to that announcement section, go all the way to the bottom, and this is where I give the course intro and I go over the syllabus, how your grade is broken down, and up here, we have the difference between asynchronous and synchronous class. So please, if you have not, read through this, because some of you are still confused, like, oh, are we having a WebEx meeting today? Are we meeting via Zoom all the time? And I've explained this several times in these videos. Um, we're only meeting via Zoom about three or four times the whole semester. The vast majority of class is done through this announcement section where I post these videos, like the one you're watching right now, and also the content page where I put your assignments, okay? Cool. So, um, that's all I got for you today. Keep the video a little shorter. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, always email me. And that's about it. So, yeah. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.